More violence in the Gaza Strip and in Israel. Uh, the Israeli army is considering calling up its reservists. Uh, they are uh, thinking of uh, bringing back up 30,000 troops. They're uh, getting ready a ground invasion of Gaza, it looks like. Uh, whether they actually do it or not, they are certainly threatening it. Uh, they are rolling in the tanks to the border. Uh, and Ahud Barak is saying that, and this, of course, he's their defense minister, that they are ready to strike against Gaza. And they cannot believe that Hamas would retaliate for the massive bombings that Israel did the other day, killing many civilians. In fact, 19 Palestinians are dead already. Uh, we already told you yesterday that a couple of kids under five had been killed and an 11-month-old had also been killed. We're going to show you video of his father in just a second. Uh, meanwhile, another Israeli strike killed a UN school teacher in Gaza. So much collateral damage, so many accidents. Golly gee, I don't know how these wind up happening. Now, on the flip side, uh, Hamas has retaliated. They did fire uh, rockets back into Israel, nearly 150 rockets, according to one of the news sources that I read. And some came near Tel Aviv. They did not hit Tel Aviv. They hit uh, an area called Rishon Lezion. I'm probably I'm positive I'm saying that wrong. Uh, that's in the southern outskirts of Tel Aviv. Some fell into the sea. Um, but they did hit civilians in southern Israel, and three Israelis are dead as well, and hence Ehud Barak rolling in the tanks, etc. Now let's keep it real. Uh, here is exactly when uh, the hostilities began. Right after the U.S. elections and right before the Israeli elections. Netanyahu uh, has to shore up his credentials and his mainly known as a hawk, and he's going to punish the Palestinians and he's going to teach them a lesson. Conveniently, the first shooting was on November 8th, two days after the American elections. And uh, they uh, had a 12-year-old boy uh, who was killed by an Israeli bullet while he was playing soccer. And uh, that was right after uh, a lull of two weeks where there was no violence. So right around the American elections, no violence. By the way, if you don't know the deal, Netanyahu and Ehud Barak got what is called Iron Dome to protect them against some of those Hamas rockets uh, from the United States. President Obama gave it to them. And then all of a sudden, Ehud Barak started saying very positive things about how President Obama was the greatest American president they'd ever worked with. And he was such a swell guy for giving them the Iron Dome. What is clear to anyone who follows politics is the Obama administration made a deal with the Netanyahu administration. We'll give you Iron Dome. Just don't cause any trouble before our elections. Immediately after our elections, have at it, Haas. So, golly gee, two days after, Israelis wind up killing a 12-year-old boy. And then, uh, so of course, Hamas then strikes back. They injure one Israeli soldier. Then on uh, November 10th, two days after that, well, golly gee, another soccer field and two more children are killed by Israel. What a wild coincidence. They're about to have their elections on January of 2013. And then, of course, when their kids are killed, Hamas fires back. And here we go. But even then, Egypt came in and got a ceasefire. So, okay, good, things have calmed down, there's a ceasefire. And then, of course, on Wednesday, Israel killed the military leader of Hamas. Uh, they killed Ahmad al-Jabari uh, with a missile strike. And they launched a number of other missile strikes that killed uh, the civilians that I was mentioning earlier. And then when Hamas fired back, they were outraged. I can't believe it. How could you fire into civilians? But wait a minute, didn't you just fire into civilians in Gaza? That, that's but we defense. But wait a minute, you're the one who broke the ceasefire. You're the one who shot the kids in the first place. No, 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 Israel can never, ever be wrong, right? And of course, our government totally agrees with that. So uh, to, to which point, let me get to the statements back and forth of the governments. A uh, senior official uh, of Israel makes it at least clear. He says, we're not talking about a ceasefire. It's not on the agenda. Really? Huh. Weird. It's almost as if you wanted this conflict. But no, no, of course not. It's always the Palestinians' fault. Always, right? Well, that's what our government thinks. Now, Ehud Barak, in case he was not clear enough, Israel's uh, defense minister, of course, says, this escalation will exact a price that the other side will have to pay. Really? So let me get this right. 
after you killed the seven to ten civilians the day before, when they retaliate, you are shocked and chagrined and say, they will have to pay a heavy price. Now, how could you be outraged that they retaliated when you killed civilians and then you say, how could you target my civilians in Tel Aviv? How could you possibly do that? The, look, to me, neither side should do it. When Hamas does it, it is massively counterproductive, it is immoral, it is a dumb strategy, and it's not the right thing to do. But the fake outrage by the Israelis and by the US and by the West is maddening when they do the same exact thing, but of course on a bigger level because they have bigger weapons. Then we go to our governments. First of all, Tony Blair, uh, of course he's not the leader of England anymore, but he can't help but chime in here. He says, Tony Blair, this is a tweet by Al Jazeera English, Tony Blair calls on Hamas to stop firing rockets, says Israel will continue to defend itself. Now look at the framing. It, does he say Hamas will continue to defend itself? No, how dare Hamas counterattack? How dare they fire missiles? Of course, Israel can fire them all day long because they're just defending themselves. Well, isn't Hamas also defending themselves? No. Two different standards. It's obvious, it's brazen. We don't care. We do it with no shame whatsoever. Now, so that's Tony Blair over in the UK. Uh, now let's go to Jake Carney, the White House press secretary. He says that President Obama condemns the Palestinian actions, of course, but not Israel's action. And in fact, they say, quote, there is no justification for these cowardly acts. So when Israel fires into civilians, it is a bold and courageous move. When Hamas does it, it is a cowardly act with no excuse whatsoever. And then I was amused by this. Uh, it is breaking news by uh, AFP, that's a news agency. They say US calls on Egypt to use influence with Palestinians to help de-escalate situation in Gaza. Hmm. I wonder if we should do the same thing. Does the US have a little bit of influence with Israel? Should we perhaps call on them to de-escalate as well? Nah, that's never occurred to anybody. No, they got a right to defend themselves. No, no, no. Let's go disproportionate. Let's bomb away. And obviously, the Palestinians should know when they're conquered and they should bow their heads and they should take their beating and then say thank you sir may I have another now of course they could try a peaceful solution like going to the UN and asking for statehood oh right they are doing that that's what Israel's mad about okay so what are the results of this well this is where it gets absolutely tragic there is a journalist who works for BBC and he was uh, in the Palestinian territories, he was in Gaza, and so was his son. And they caught up with him after his son had been killed. Let's watch. Our condolences, Jihad. Tell me what happened with you. What happened? Shrapnel hit our house. Shrapnel? Yes, my sister-in-law was killed along with my son and my brother and my other son were wounded. In which area? In Al Zaytun. <laughs> this is the situation here. Our deepest condolences to our colleague Jihad Al Masharawi. Now Jihad is announcing the death of his son and sister-in-law. Our condolences go out to him from all the BBC World Services staff and BBC Arabic. This is the situation here, as you can see, in the heart of Gaza City and Al Shifa Hospital. Jihad, what do you want to say now? How do you feel now? What did my son do to die like this? What was his mistake? He is 10 or 11 months old. What did he do? Now, I got a young son. Uh, for any of you who had a son, you remember when they were 11 months old? And then they tell you, no, your kid's collateral damage. the Palestinians had it coming. How dare they? How dare they? Uh, when those 12-year-old boys were killed and the ones on the soccer field, how could Hamas retaliate? Well, obviously we had to do more indiscriminate bombing inside. No, oh, oh no, I'm sorry. Israel would say it's not indiscriminate. We just keep making mistake after mistake and killing child after child. They say, of course, we don't target them some of the bombs kill who we call terrorists, and some of them happen to kill these guys. Now, there's one thing Israel's right about. 
Gaza is launching missiles from inside the city. In fact, BBC, in this part of the report, you'll see them show that part of that. Here, watch. It was quiet overnight, but it's been a noisy morning uh, from dawn, really. We heard the thuds of Israeli airstrikes. They have continued all morning. Just within the last minute, really, there was a large explosion to the north of here, uh, just to the north of Gaza City, close to the coast road. And at the same time, we've seen the vapor trails of dozens of rockets being fired by Palestinian, Palestinian militants into Israel. An update on the casualty figures. Uh, we understand 13 Palestinians have now been killed since yesterday. Uh, five today, all of them militants today. But in total, there have been some civilians, uh, including children. Look, our job is to bring you the facts. So you see there that... Uh from that footage, it appears that uh, Hamas is firing from within a uh, city, uh, obviously Gaza, right? And uh, so Israel says, well, i got to fire back at that place. Now, I'm sh my guess is Hamas would say, well, what did you want me to do? Go in the middle of the desert and say, here I am, I I'm going to fire from here. And by the way, Israel also fires from Tel Aviv. But they're shocked and chagrined when Hamas fires back at Tel Aviv. Now, again... Neither side is justified in using this violence. There is a pathway to a two-state solution. One of the p pathways is you go through the United Nations and you say, hey, Palestine deserves to be a state. That doesn't even mean that you set the borders. Israel's excuse is, oh, I can't, oh, we need negotiations. I can't have them unilaterally setting my borders. By the way, at the same time, Israel is building a gigantic wall that unilaterally sets the borders. And what negotiations? What negotiations? <laughs> what could the Palestinians give you that Israel would actually say yes at this point? Now, look, there are legitimate arguments to be made. Oh, back in 2008, there was this proposal. And back, you know, when uh, Rabin was alive, there was a real proposal. And that's true. And he got assassinated for it, etc. But over the last three years, since Netanyahu has been in charge, you know what they're doing? They did it again earlier this week. On Tuesday, they said, oh, yeah. We're going to build 1,200 new homes, settlements in the West Bank. They keep saying, basically, through their actions, we have no interest in negotiation. We're going to build, build, build. We're going to take your land. We've occupied you for 60 years, and we're going to continue to occupy you. And then anytime anybody does anything in return, forget the violence. They should be condemned for the violence when the Palestinians do it. But even when they say, hey, Ken, how about statehood? How about doing peacefully through the UN? How dare you? How dare you? And when they go for statehood, as I showed you yesterday, one of the Israeli ministers said there will be a heavy price to pay. What, for trying the diplomatic solution? So there's a heavy price to pay if you fire rockets. There's a heavy price to pay if you try the peaceful solution. Gee, I wonder why the Palestinians are frustrated. I can't quite tell. Now, let me show you more civilians from inside Gaza. And you tell me if this violence is going to work out for Israel, or if perhaps if it's a little counterproductive. Now, this is going to be Mohammed Abu Shamala. He's the cousin of uh, one of the victims. Let's watch. In the last two days, as of 8 p.m. Gaza time, Israel has killed a confirmed six Gazans and injured up to 40. This morning, I attended the funeral procession of Mohammed Abed, another martyr. The 20-year-old was killed at about midnight near his home in Jabalia, North Gaza. Abaid's dead body was found at 6 a.m. <laughs> Mohammed Abu Shamala was Abaid's cousin. Our message for the enemy is that the parents are happy to sacrifice their children as martyrs. We offer more pride, dignity and solidarity to the parents and families of those injured and martyred. This is the reality of the Palestinian people. The more martyrs we give to our cause, the more we believe and stand by our cause and its resistance. They keep on killing, injuring and destroying our Palestinian people. It is our right and our duty as Palestinians to fight for our rights and to defend ourselves. I went to the mortuary at Shifa Hospital in Gaza City. Last night in the Shejaiya area, east of Gaza City, Israel killed Ahmed al Dadasawi, 20, Mohammed Harara, 16, Ahmed Harara, 15, Matar Abu al Attar, 20. 
What would you do if they killed your cousin? What would you do if you, they killed your son? Would you be restrained? I'm asking a serious question. I'm not condoning violence on either side. I'm asking you a question. What would you do? If they killed your 15-year-old son or 16-year-old son, my guess is, like the man they interviewed there, you would be motivated to keep fighting. Anybody can see that. And the reality is that the right-wing government of Israel wants that. They want to fight. They win, the right-wingers win, when there's more war. They're not the pro-peace party. They're the party that wins during war. And right before an election, lo and behold, you agitate Palestinians into more conflict. And you say, oh my God, we're in a national emergency. I have to call up 30,000 troops and roll into Gaza. Hmm, pretty convenient. Let me show you one last uh, victim here. He's a family member uh, of one of the victims. His name is Abu Usama. And the guy doing the reporting, by the way, is Harry Fear. He's in the Gaza Strip. Uh, this was from earlier today. Honestly, what happened last night was a massacre in every sense of the word. The shelling targeted those civilians, young people and parents who had rushed to the site of the first shelling, who were going to save those who were assumed injured, and they instead were attacked by a second Israeli enemy himself. The Israelis profited from this gathering of young men, women and children, targeting randomly four of them were killed and over 30 injured. The Israeli shelling didn't target a military site. They targeted civilians, just random shelling that was aimed to maximize Palestinian civilian loss and to stop the resistance. But what we have experienced, no matter how much we sacrifice, no matter how many martyrs we lose, this is our just fight to regain our land and our rights. This will not terrorize us even if we lose more martyrs. No matter how many are injured, we will not give up. We will fight blood with blood. Martyrs will follow martyrs. And we will fight until our land is ours again. If you support the right-wing government of Israel, you are doing Israel no favors whatsoever. Do those folks look like they're interested in peace after you kill their family members? And by the way, that question I asked you, Israel has an answer for it. What would you do if your family members were killed or bombed? Well, Israel says we would do massive, disproportionate bombing and violence. That is exactly what they're doing. So. A little ironic when they say, how dare the Palestinians do bombing and violence when their own are killed. This is going to keep going round and round and round until the Israelis and the Palestinians elect leadership that are actually interested in peace instead of right-wing warmongers like Netanyahu.